Texas 95.7, the Armadillo and Craig Bond in the studio with the WRCA folks. Hi, good morning. It's me. <laughs> Lehman morning. and Casey, good. how are y'all? I'm sleepy. <laughs> it's a little drizzly outside. It is. It's uh, And if you're hearing this in the evening going, what are y'all talking about? It's because it was morning when, when we talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> I forget we're not supposed to say that. Never mind, it's not raining. No, oh, it's raining. It it's could be raining. I don't know. Right. I actually can see, wonder what Alan Gwynn will say at the news here in about 10 minutes. In about two hours. I don't know <laughs> why you guys. <laughs> Three hours. I... It's 7 o'clock on Tuesday <laughs> night, everybody. It is It is not uh, 8.53. You're ruining the magic of radio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why everyone's so big. I'm just living the dream. I'm in the spirit world right now. Yes, yes. Oh, how are y'all? No rodeos last weekend. No, finally dried out from the last <laughs> couple. <laughs> got the uh, got the weekend off. Santa Fe Trail Ranch Rodeo coming up this weekend. Don't forget my strawberry pie, Norris. <laughs> oh, that's right. Neither of y'all are going. Yep. Council Grove, Kansas. Mm. Yeah. Hayes House. Yeah. Hayes House. If y'all want somewhere to eat. A neat little town. <laughs> I mean, seriously, we've talked about this before, but that little Council Grove area and all the uh, driving up through there, Cottonwood Falls is south of Council Grove, but you get up in that country, and it's really pretty. Good people. The little town's cool. What'd you say that place was? Hayes, the Hayes House? The Hayes House. It used to be an old hotel. It's a good mm. little, good restaurant, little cafe. That's where the infamous strawberry pie incident occurred uh-huh. from last year. Uh-huh. Oh, it didn't occur. Or, or you, didn't you occur. You created your own <laughs> yeah, mystery. I dug that <laughs> hole. He created his own <laughs> mystery, Craig. No. There's a lesson in there. <laughs> When Casey wants strawberry pie from the Hayes house, you bring strawberry pie right. home. I even went you, and got or, a smidge bigger <laughs> Levi's thinking you were coming. I know. It's my bad. And I had to go back and exchange them. I feel really bad about that. Or, or come up with a better excuse than I ate it. Well, it you can't, at that point, it's better to tell the truth. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Because he wore the shirt the next day that he drove back in, uh-huh. and there were calf Stains, slobbers right yeah, there on the yeah. button, and I could smell that handmade Cool Whip a mile away, and he had it on him. Uh, yep, yeah, there you there's go. There's a lesson in there yep. somewhere. Next time, I mean, hyenas came and attacked the truck and yeah, got in I, there and stole I, a straw, and you just barely got out with your well, life. something better than, <laughs> oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> that was, was, was pulled over by... Twelve bikers and let me go if I gave him the pie. Bikers. Twelve hungry bikers. Hungry bikers. <laughs> we'll take two bikers. <laughs> and pull from the Hayes house, <laughs> and you still would give them a strawberry pie. Anyway, that's coming up uh, uh, this week, <laughs> and then you next weekend you got a couple of them. You got uh, Warica and Sandhills, or you got you got double week, double double rodeos that weekend. Is that right? The twelfth, yes. thirteenth, and Sandhills on the fourteenth. Yep, two rodeos up in Arthur. Back to back on Sunday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then Friday, Saturday nights in Warwick, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. We'll have uh, the Warwick Chamber of Commerce Ranch Rodeo. So next weekend, yeah, that'll be a busy time. Yeah, it looks like July and August are pretty full. With uh, with no, I don't think any weekends off in July or August looks like. No, that's why we need the strawberry pie. Because it's. it's because it's warm enough now to rodeo. Yeah, it will be a, <laughs> will be a, a busy couple of months. Well, we got a uh, pretty cool thing on tap for today. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm pretty excited to talk to this guy. It's, I'll let you. You want to introduce the or yeah, talk we'll, about we'll it? Yeah, we'll get him on here in just a minute. But we've kind of talked about the two new things that are going to happen at World Championship this year. The, the horse sale, the Invitational Ranch Gilding sale that we're going to do. That'll be Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. inside the Coliseum. That's going to be fun. And then following that from 3 to 5 is uh, a viewing of a new movie that's coming out. It's called Cowboys, and the two directors are John Langmore and Bud Force, and we are going to get to visit with John here in a couple minutes, kind of get a little backstory on this deal and how it started, and uh, really excited about, number one, just getting to be around these guys and hear the stories, but then the fact they chose WRCA in our world championship as a place they mm-hmm. wanted to do a viewing. That's just kind of an honor. Pretty cool. And you guys aren't charging for it or anything. And it's across the street, by the way. It's at the Globe News Center. Right. Uh, so it won't be in the actual Civic Center. That's right. Yeah. 
No, which yep. is uh, which not is a, not a ticketed event. You know, that's that thing seats about thirteen hundred people. So, John and I were talking late yesterday. We don't know how many people to expect. Yeah. So we'll we'll have to get into that, but uh, we'll be putting out more details as we get closer on you know when doors will open and all the process of those kind mm-hmm. of things. But uh, yeah, we will visit with John and get kind of his story on on this film. There's no tickets to be purchased, but we're going to, the foundation will be present there to take immediate donations. Passing the cowboy hat. Interested. Passing a hat. Sure. <laughs> right. Or a bucket or something. Mm-hmm. What better yeah. place uh, uh, from watching a little bit of the trailer? And I feel that this is a tribute to, to it tells a good story of the legacy, the heritage, and basically what it's about. Mm hmm. So we'll see what John has to say. Cool. Yeah. You want to call him now? Let's do it. All right. As promised, here he is on the phone. John Langmore, how are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you, Craig. How are you? Uh, we're, we're good up here. We, we've we been uh, pretty excited about this film, after, especially after the trailers on the website and everything, and it just uh, looks awesome. It gives you goosebumps. Well, yeah, no, thanks. We're, um, you know, we are very anxious to roll it out to the world and hope that it lives up to everybody's expectations. We're we're cautiously optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it is one of those things that um, you you were telling me yesterday and even this morning before we actually got on the air that nobody nobody has seen the the finished product yet, including you and Bud, and so. That's got to be kind of an anxious moment for you to actually, you know, you've got to see obviously all of the making and the editing and you know what it's going to be in there. But starting it, turning the thing on and watching it till the credits roll, that's going to have to be a pretty exciting time for you guys. Yeah, no, it's, it's kind of hard to describe, um, you know, and especially I think even more so like once we show it up there in Amarillo with you guys doing it with an audience is an entirely different experience Mm -hmm. than, you know, watching it by yourself in a room, you know, with a control panel in front of you and you're constantly stopping and adjusting the color here or there or the sound quality. But to, like you said, let it run from beginning to end with an audience and especially, you know, in Amarillo, an audience of cowboys and cowgirls, that'll, yeah, yeah, that'll be a very unique experience. We are, Looking forward to it. John, it's a unique experience, but I have to say, just watching through the trailer and probably on behalf of the whole lifestyle, I can't speak for everybody, but you portrayed the honor and the the grit and the legacy. And I think that basically was the three high points that you want to hit when rolling out something is the word cowboy has so many different things tied to it, and everyone has this facade in their head about the meaning of it. Well, you portrayed the folks that are in there as the true working ranch cowboys, and I think just by watching the trailer, you guys did a bang-up job, and I think you will be received a lot, I think, with pride and honor more than what you guys probably think you will. I'm just putting the you know cart before the horse, but that's the feeling I got yeah. on it. Well... You know, obviously, I hope you're right, Casey. Um, And and I will say, so, you know, our objective with this film was to kind of take two things and bring them together, both that existed sort of separately. One is the great cinematic Western, Mm -hmm. you know, Lonesome Dove, The Last of the Mohicans, um, you know, any of the Sergio Leone films, you know, just the great cinematic westerns. And then there, but sort of separate from that are these really authentic westerns that in, in the documentary realm, like you might think of Ranch album if you've seen Gail Steiger's film or the highly exalted that mm-hmm. um, film about, you know, the IL wagon. And we wanted to combine those two things, make it a really authentic film, but that's cinematically done. So that was really what we were hoping to do is to bring those, um, you know, two aspects of great films together. And, you know, I, I mean, 
authenticity is really what working cowboys are all about. and You just have to tell their story the way it really is. And it's, there's clearly some romance to it. And, uh, you know, you're out in open space, you're horseback all day, but it is hard work. I mean, we open up the whole film with the story about a guy that like virtually everyone wanted to be a cowboy. He was a truck driver in Missouri and he went out to the Spanish ranch in Nevada and gave it a try and lasted one day. Oh, yes, everyone thinks it's a romantic lifestyle. I would say that we're rich in the, you know, not rich in the pocketbook, but we are rich in lifestyle. And I think that's why everyone stays hooked. Even though the downfalls and the peaks and the valleys of what you go through, uh, that is one thing that holds us. Is it's, it, Once it's in you, it's in you. You can't get, it's, you can't explain it. It's something that lives inside you and burns in your soul that you can't get rid of. And nor do we want to try. So I think it's great. Yeah, and, you know, even the tagline that's on that poster for the film says, uh, it's not what you do, it's who you are. And I think that speaks to what you just said. And I think it's very true about anyone that's ever cowboyed before. Yes, sir. John, you touched on one of the things I was curious about was kind of your inspiration um, and your driving force. But let's back all the way up to you know, how the idea came about and really you and Bud, your unique situation of how y'all teamed up and and how this really came to life. I think people would be very interested to hear that story. Well, (laughs) it really came to life (laughs) through dumb luck. Um, So I had just in 2016, I had, at that point, I was four years into photographing my book on the cowboy and kind of thought I was done. And my office had a, in a building here in uh, Austin, Texas, that's mainly houses filmmakers. And I was just in my office working one day and a young guy took out the office next to me and he came in and introduced himself. And, you know, he was wearing shorts and a uh, a shotgun willy t-shirt and a trucker ball cap and had long hair and <laughs> said, Hey, I just saw your, uh, your photography and see your, you know, photographing cowboys. And he said, well, I just got off the tongue river ranch up in the panhandle. And, you know, not only does no one in Austin know about the tongue river ranch, I'm thinking, who's this guy with a shotgun? Willie exactly. T-shirt? <laughs> you know, talking about the Tongue River Ranch, and he just got back from there. And right at that time, I was looking for a ranch to go to in the Panhandle, and, of course, they were one I was considering. So once he, you know, said that, and then he told me that he was a bull rider when he was younger, and, uh, you know, he had worked on some ranches as well. Of course, we became fast friends. And I want to say that was mid-late 2016, and then by the end of the year, he came in, And I had thought about doing a documentary film when I started my book project and just realized that there's no chance it didn't go anywhere. And Bud came in and said, hey, I've wanted to do a documentary film on working cowboys for 10 years. And, you know, you know your way around that world. Would you want to partner up and make this film? And I thought about it for about two weeks and said, sure, let's let's do it. So we started really kind of started got serious the first of 2017 and um you know he and i put together that teaser and then put that out on facebook and it kind of went crazy and that got us introduced to Faley, who um was the first one to kind of join the team and you know three years later we've got a finished film that's awesome <laughs> So you you you're not like a you're not even a cowboy yourself are you this is just something that really I guess touch is there a cowboy in your in your uh no, you, in your in your in your like is you get grandparents or great grandparents or Yeah yeah well so yeah um my great granddad was actually a uh, Teddy Roosevelt rough rider and oh, wow. he got my dad all interested in cowboys through stories Right then my dad did a well-known photo book on the cowboy in 1975 called the cowboy it was very well known back then and he went to all the big outfits of the day back then he got me a job when i was 12 years old 
on a ranch in eastern Montana owned by a pretty notorious guy named Benny Binion. <laughs> and then I spent the next 12 summers cowboying. So That's I would cool. go out with a wagon the first half of the summer and brand calves and then go back to Binion's uh. the second half of the summer through my first year of law school. Then I quit cowboying for 30 years because it didn't pay as well as being a lawyer. And, and then when I took up photography, I had this idea to, you know, kind of pick up where my dad left mm. off and go do my own book on the cowboy. And then all this kind of rolled on from there. So I started on that yeah. book in 2012, and that was the first time I'd been on an outfit in probably, I think, 27 years. Oh, wow. So the lifestyle bit you then. <laughs> got got yeah, in your blood. No question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Well, I just did a big circle. Yeah. To get back to it. <laughs> that's cool. That's, that's, look, I'm glad we were able to get John on because yeah. you start learning stuff about the, the meat of the matter, yeah. what's under, yeah. you know, and I wouldn't have known that about John if we wouldn't have had the opportunity to, to hear that story. That's really and cool. And I think the folks that are curious about the movie, maybe they're smarter than me. Maybe they already know more about you know, th that background than I do, but I'm, I'm glad we're able to tell this, John. So when people come and watch this, uh, they're going to have a little better idea of the, the guys that made it mm -hmm. and, and the motivation that, you know, led you to where you're at. So that's cool. It did, Hey, John, so did, were you the, the principal, like a uh, photographer part of like, I'm looking at when I was watching the, the trailer and there's these great drone scenes and there's obviously this this wonderful photography. Is that something you and Bud split up or like, yeah. do you have separate roles in the movie when it came to that? Yeah, no, good good question. So really, you know the way. So I kind of well, Bud brought all of the filmmaking skill set. So he's gotcha. the director of photography, which really means the you know the cinematographer for the film, and he. He'd worked with two other cameramen, uh, Tito West and Hank Wisrote, and one of them was with us on every shoot. So it was me. We never, our crew was always three people. It was me and Bud and then either Hank or Tito for each of those. And, uh, so all of the, the, um, video film work, that's all Bud and Hank and Tito. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, obviously when you look at that, they did an amazing job. And Bud took up drones way before they were a thing. He was like a real pioneer with drones. And, uh, you know, he's really good with them. So that, that added a lot to the film. And then all the still photography. So I, I thought I was done photographing for my book when Bud and I started on the film. And I had a publisher, but he hadn't finished putting the book together. So each ranch I would come home from, I'd photograph while I was on the ranch, and I'd send him all of my edits from each of those trips. And so a lot of those made it into the book. So I just kind of kept going with the book. Um, and then... You know, so Bud brought the the film production knowledge to the project, mm -hmm. and I really brought, you know, the knowledge of big outfits and working cowboys to the project. Oh, cool. And then we had an amazing editor, this guy, Lucas Harger, up in St. Louis, really kind of a gifted editor. He weaved our two pieces together to kind of make it into a... a you know, a story that you can relate to. I mean, Bud and I were with him in the room through the whole edit, but, you know, Lucas is the one that weaved together, you know, Bud's film work and my, you know, knowledge of working cowboys and put it into a story that wound up, you know, with a finished film. So it's it's a real team project. And then this woman, Faley, that joined us early on, she helped a lot with ideas of what we should pursue when we go out and film. And, of course, she offered a woman's perspective on the making of the film, which is entirely unique, than a bunch of guys sitting in a room by themselves. And right. it adds a lot. <laughs> you know, you yeah. really need to take some of the guy out of everything. To get it. Well, I tell <laughs> you, I really good. like you, John. <laughs> I think we're going to become fast friends. <laughs> Well, it's true. There's no doubt about it. You can, guys left to their own devices are always kind of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> 
We all know that, by the way, whether it's just whether we admit it or not. Yeah, you just made Casey very happy. <laughs> it doesn't take much. Yeah. How, so how did you, how many ranches you got featured in the film? Ten. Wow. Ten different ranches. Mm. How, so, how, how did, how did that all kind of come about? Did you have a vision uh, did did you know yeah. the ones all up front, or did you kind of go as you know as it went? How how did how did those ten become to be the ten? Now don't spoil it. So really, it was primarily um, you know I had gone to twelve ranches for the sake of the book, so I really relied on to the out on the outfits that I'd already been to. So at that point, I had a real good sense of you know what was going on at the big outfits out west. Um, so mainly we pulled from those. We added a few that, um, you know, weren't part of the book. Bud knew Tom Morehouse. So Tom's in there. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Bud knew the Tongue River. So they um, are in the film. And most of those others were ones that uh, I had been to as part of the book. And really, you know, in choosing the ranches, what we were looking for were outfits that ran a full crew. You know, that's because the stories about, you know, the bigger outfits, obviously there's a lot of smaller ranches. They do the same work. They're every bit as authentic as the bigger outfits. But we were looking for the ones that run a full crew. And, um, you know, the ranches, you guys would recognize probably all of them, I would suspect. A few of them are obviously northern buckaroo outfits. But uh, I know they've been down to the WRCA before in the past. Um so that was it, you know, mainly a crew. And then we went, like, Clint Johnson is in there when when they were calving. And, you know, Tom Morehouse, they may not run as big a crew, but, you know, those are such legendary guys. We were more than happy to, we were kind of honored to have them in the film. You have to have a jillion stories. <laughs> and I know, I know we don't have enough time to get into to everything, but... If you had to maybe dig deep into your pocket and and say, okay, there was just this one, you know, funny situation or unique uh, adventure you ended up on, do you have one you could share with the listeners? You know, it's it, it's funny. The making of the film was actually a lot smoother than you would think. <laughs> and Lena, you and I were talking yesterday. It's every time we go to an outfit you know, what you worry about is, oh, my God, I hope I don't get anyone hurt. You know, I hope no one stands up at the wrong time when a guy's on a green horse and, you know, he gets bucked off into a rock or something or, you you know, someone stands up in the gate right as they're pushing a day's worth of cows into the pens and then you send them all tumbling backwards and the guys, you know, lose a full day of work. None of that ever happened, thank God. It was every, I never breathed a sigh of relief until we were literally driving off the ranch. You know, it was until you were absolutely done. And every single trip we got off without any major dramas. You know, there were things, you know, uh, like we went to Montana and I went in a day early to go to the padlock and it was our winter shoot. And of course we wanted snow for the winter shoot. And it was 55 degrees when I got there. <laughs> and Bud and Tito were coming in the next day and I was sweating it, you know, oh, man, <laughs> this is going to be, we're, we may have to stretch this out for another year, try and pack in another trip, which would have been hard. <laughs> a blizzard rolled in that night <laughs> and just covered everything in a foot of snow. No. Um, you know, we we were loving it. And all the cowboys were hating it, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we got out, we got out pretty scot free, and we were always we never rode horses, so we were always on the ground. You know, I rode when I was photographing the book, and that always opens up things for a lot more, uh, you know, comical stories. But we were always on foot and avoided any major dramas. So um, I'm actually kind of glad that I don't have. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay. some story about a good wreck. Yeah, yeah. Well, and mm. one that you didn't absolutely, you know, I think that the fact that you talk about you were on these outfits and you had the opportunity to go on these outfits, 
It actually says a lot for how you all handle your work because if they can respect you enough and, and know that you can be trustworthy, that's why you guys got to go where you did. And I, I, I think that is part of the exciting of how you handled yourselves. And so that you say there's no funny stories and it is a good thing because now it opened up opportunities for you. And it's all out of, because a lot of ranches get hit up all the time for photographers and filmmakers and, and you, it scares the ranchers, it scares the working ranch cowboy. You know, we're the world's worst at telling our own story, as you know. And when you put a camera in front of somebody and it's being documented or written or photographed, you, it says a lot for what Hank and Tito and, and you and Bud did out of, I don't know, having a, the patience and the respect for the ranch you were going on. That's why you guys have the cool reputation that you do. So congrats on that, because it's hard to do. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate that, Casey. And I, I, I understand exactly what you are saying in that, you know, it is a closed-off world. And, and understandably, um, for any of a bunch of different reasons, I mean, you know, the most obvious ones being that, you know, when you're working around 1,000-pound animals, there are a hundred, a thousand-fold more ways for things to go wrong than they are to go right. Sure. Um, and, you know, of course, they're nervous about people that don't understand livestock coming onto a ranch and, you know, either getting somebody hurt, you know, screwing up a day's work. And, um, and I, you know, it was... I went on to those ranches with the greatest respect for what these guys do, men and women, what all of them do. And, um, and, and so did Bud and Tito and Hank. And it was funny when we, when me and Bud and Hank went to Singleton's was the first ranch we went to. And Jeff Bilberry's good buddy of mine from me having been out there photographing. And so I, you know, Jeff, and I were good enough friends that I thought, okay, if I'm going to go try out a new crew somewhere, you know, people I don't know and bring them on to one of these outfits, you know, Jeff will be as easy on me as anyone. Um, and I was so nervous going out there. I didn't know Bud that well. You know, I knew sure. he would cowboyed and didn't know Hank at all. I met him that morning when we got in the, you know, met up at my house to get in the truck and all head to New Mexico. And I was so anxious. And then it was not three hours into it, I realized how respectful they were. Bud totally knows his way around livestock. And, um, and I'm, you know, I've thought about it. Like, there's any of a number of good filmmakers that, you know, someone could partner with to make a, docu a documentary film about cowboys. But I'll tell you, there's, I bet there's not five that are as good with a camera as Bud, but they could also go on to a big outfit and be well received and leave every one of them with all of the guys considering him a friend. And there you, go. you know how that sort of, if you've done well, what they say is, hey, you're welcome back anytime. That they boy. said that at every outfit, you know, we drove off of. And I think that's a real testament to, you know, Bud and Tito and Hank. And of course, all of us have a, a love for this way of life. And, and they knew that we were you know, had our only intention was to tell their story, you know, respectfully and, and truthfully and authentically. And, and they pick up on that and they know it. And, um, sure. you know, that, that's, well, good that's job. why they were, yeah, yeah. That, no, it was, uh, good job. it's a sense of pride for all of us. I know it. And it shows in the trailer, and I'm very excited. Hopefully I'll get over there to watch it, but <laughs> we're very, very excited to see it. Because those are the qualities that we instill in everything that we do in this lifestyle. And it sounds to me like you guys nailed it. So congrats, because it's hard to do. Well, like I said, yeah, no, we're, we're, it, I, I, here's what I do think. You know, I've got high anxiety about the fact that no one's seen the film and there's all this interest, interest built up. What I do think is if you like that teaser, I think you'll love the film. You know, yeah. it's yeah. we put so much more into the making of the film than we did the teaser as good as it was. You know, the production quality is higher, but you go so much deeper with the story in a 90-minute film. You know, you really get to 
explore things that you just kind of touched on in the teaser. So, well, um, yeah, fingers what, crossed. What's interesting is it's going to bring the new. It's going to tell the story, but then it's also going to bring back memories for those older guys and gals that, hey, it, it's going to be rewarding in many aspects. And I think you're, I'm excited. So you know what I would love is between the book and the film, and it's funny because my dad's book did this. There's, I, I've been approached by so many people that have said, one guy was in France, stumbled on my dad's book, realized that cowboys were for real. And this is all, <laughs> also the same as Greg Snow, who's the buckaroo boss up on the YP and is in the film, that they saw my dad's book, and it was the first time they realized that that kind of cowboy still existed. This is back in the 70s. Yeah, you know, I'd love it if we like built a whole new pipeline of people that, you know, wanted to pursue this way of life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if they saw the film or if they, you know, looked at and read the book and, um, you know, really understood it, because it doesn't paint a false picture, neither one. You know, yeah. there's no question that if you if you read the book and you watch this film, you're going to know what you're in for, the good and the bad. And uh, I'd love it if if it inspired a whole new group of young people to to keep this, yeah. you know, honorable profession alive for the next hundred years. Well, let's hope it does, because <laughs> we're in it to win it. <laughs> we got to. And I, John, that's, you just nailed it. But, I mean, the opportunity that y'all have afforded us to be a part of this at WRCA in the World Championship, what you just said really touches to our core mission for WRCA, and that's about preserving this cowboy lifestyle. And so just as you and Bud kind of found each other in, in that interesting kind of way, and you went on this journey, now y'all are y'all have found WRCA, and now we're going to get to be a part of that journey in a small way. And we are truly honored to be able to help show this film and spread that message to the audience that we're going to have it at the world championship and i guess just just another another thing we can say is just we're honored appreciate you guys yeah. choosing us well i sure appreciate that lehman and you know gary morton he he was a big part of my dad's book he's a big part of this film you know he's obviously a big part of the wrca as well and i've been to y'all's finals you know easy half dozen times and uh it's one of the greatest gatherings of working cowboys, you know, that exist in the country. And uh, the, I, I would say, and I'm not just, you know, returning the favor, we are truly honored to show it there. And this is, this film is for the cowboys. You know, of course, we hope it, it becomes a big thing. And, you know, people in New York and Greenwich, Connecticut and Berlin, Germany watch it. But in the end, it's for the Cowboys. It, it has to be, right? Because yes. we're telling their story. And so showing it to the Cowboys at a Cowboy gathering, you know, all of us, me, Bud, Faley, and Lucas, all that's what means the most to us. So we are so excited. And that'll be our first Cowboy screening. We're going to have another one up, up in Elko during the poetry gathering, but this one comes first. And so it's going to be a super meaningful uh, event for us, as you can imagine. Having you on today, hopefully what we accomplished is people that may not have been as familiar with this project. Maybe now they've got a little taste. And uh, Craig, you mentioned the website for where that trailer is. What was that again? Yeah, thecowboymovie.com. Thecowboymovie.com. John, that's the best place for somebody to go kind of get basic info right and watch the trailer. Uh, any other things you could push out to somebody to say if they want to learn more? How would is, is that website really the place to go? Yeah, I'd say the website. We also have a Facebook page, but both of those will, um, you know, announce all of the screenings. And we got several that are kind of in the works, but you, you know, we we can't quite announce them yet. And uh, so that, that those are the places to. Uh, 
be kept up to date. You know, also my website will always have information about it as well. So, uh, yeah, it, hopefully it won't be hard for anybody um, that's interested. But the thecowboymovie.com will keep everybody up to date on what's going on. Okay, good deal. 3 to 5 p.m. will be the viewing during the World Championship Ranch Rodeo on Saturday. Um, you can always keep up with anything about the World Championship at WRCA.org, of course. But, John, please pass along to Bud the, how much we're looking forward to spending some time with him when he comes in. And if you guys need anything or anything we can do for you, please let us know. I need a new pair of spurs from that guy that's got a two-year wait list. Well, so if I can jump the queue on that, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Uh, I'll think of some more stuff before I get there. Well, make your make your list, and they're all going to be there. Um, there's a plethora to pick from, my friend. That's well, funny, listen, John. Uh, That's you funny. know, Lehman, Craig, and Casey, I've, I've sure enjoyed the visit. And I just, you know, it is going to be the longest, what do we got now? July, August, September, October, November, <laughs> the longest four plus months, um, you know, mm-hmm. to, to that Saturday afternoon. But I'm looking forward to it. And Bud, by the way, is off in India right now. And, uh, you know, I know he'd send his regards and he'll be glad to know that you guys are looking forward to meeting him. Well, yeah. I need him to bring me some calming medicine. Um, maybe he can hook me up with because I have anxiety too. I want. I'm so don't, excited to meet you guys. Don't think you're allowed to bring those back over. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's <laughs> right. You, you got to go to Colorado. <laughs> well, being a New Mexican, I knew we'd hit it off. John. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not touching that. Uh, appreciate you, John. All right, y'all. Thanks a lot. You bet. Take care, John. Adios.